Okay, so um, bonus question time. <laughs> um, I thought I'd just explain a little bit about EPS, what it is. So I have here in front of me an EPS blank. Uh, EPS blanks. So EPS stands for expanded polystyrene, um, also known as styrene. If you go and buy a coffee and you get a styrene cup, it's the exact same material. I have a little piece of it here in my hands, but what's key about it is when I break it, it's got these very tiny balls in it. And um, the way that EPS is actually made, um, they take these little balls, they put it into a big mold, they blow a hot steam into it, and these little balls expand. And that becomes polystyrene. They expand it into things like cups and molds. Um, the biggest use for EPS today is really around packaging material. So you get a new TV, so stuff that wraps around there. Um, what the guys have done for surfing is it's the exact same material, except what they do is they use a smaller ball and they also fuse the ball together. So they put an additive that just makes the ball stick to each other a little bit more, a little bit uh, tighter, um, and just makes it a little bit better for shaping and gets the board nice and smooth. Um, if you used Normal EPS that you, you know, buy wherever, um, you tend to find the balls a bit bigger and the balls roll when you shape them. So as the plane that goes over it, it picks the ball out of the foam and it rolls. Um, and that, of course, is not something you want with EPS. So this is EPS foam. Um, now, a lot of guys will call an EPS foam board an epoxy board. The foam is EPS. The resin that we wrap it with is um, epoxy resin. So epoxy's been around for quite a while. Um, the advantages of epoxy is that its molecular structure is better. It actually bonds tighter than traditional polyester. Um, so it's a tighter bond onto the, onto the, um, the components. And um, one of the negatives, however, is that in the past, um, epoxy boards used to yellow. They used to go yellow quite quickly. Um, but then there's new companies like Entropy that have come out with new bioresins, so they've got biomass into them, makes it a bit greener. Um, and into those resins, they have put UV stabilizers. So if I pour some of this out, it's either got a purple, depending on the make, this one's got a blue tint to it. Other makes have got a purple tint. And if you know anything about light and UV, UV light's got that purple light to it. Blue is that same spectrum. And what it does is it just makes sure that the board remains whiter for longer and the board doesn't yellow. So um, EPS has come a long way. Um, some of the things that you'll hear about EPS is that if you get a den, it's going to suck water. Uh, the truth is that will happen. If you get a den, what happens is the water has between these little balls, it has little spaces and it's got the ability to suck in water. So it's a bit like a, uh, they call it like a, a cheese grate, it just, it just sucks right into the, into the board. If you do get a ding on EPS, um, the best thing to do is to let it drain fully, get as much water out. So as quickly as the water goes into the board, if you flip it upside down and the, the ding's on the nose, it'll eventually drain. But it's important to get that board drained and then to seal that board up. Um, one of the other things that you'll hear people say about EPS is that it has the ability to degas. Um, and degas means that the board and the structure of this foam at the moment is degassing. Um, if, you, if you understand principles of most materials, most materials are degassing. If you buy a carpet, it's degassing. If you buy a couch, it's degassing. That means everything that's in it is just slowly releasing. So if you think of a couch and it's glue, glue vapors are slowly degassing for months after that couch has been glued together. So the same thing happens with this foam. And um, there's always a concern that when people glass this, that that foam is going to be degassing. And sometimes when you get a ding, people hear a little bit of hiss as that gas releases. Now, in the old days when people used to take EPS boards onto planes, they used to run into problems with degassing. So the gas, the pressure in the plane used to build that degas up and the pressure couldn't release and it resulted in delaminations of boards. 
But that was then. Nowadays, with the EPS foam and this close cell structure and the fact that they bond those little balls together, means that there's less gas coming off and the structure can contain itself. So that gas doesn't need to expand because there's less gas in between the bubbles, essentially. So, you know, they very much fix that problem. You can take your EPS board, you can chuck it onto a plane, it'll get to the other end and it'll be 100% um, fine. Um, the other things with this foam is that uh, it flexes a bit more. I'm not sure if I can show you on this one. Uh, probably not. I'll probably have to put it on the ground. But the foam actually flexes a bit more than PU. And PU typically you've got a string around it. So that's one of the other, the other principles of it. Um, this foam is more buoyant in the water. Um, some people say, yep, they can feel the buoyancy. Um, it's slight, but there is more buoyancy. So it floats slightly better. Um, you've got to remember that when you're trying to set a rail because something that floats and wants to pop out of the water you sometimes can't set as much so it's a, it's a design principle you need to bring into your designs um, but yeah it's uh, it floats well works well good cheap foam the other thing that I want to say about this is that one of the reasons why the industry is going this way is this essentially is recyclable so just like your packaging material you can take it to the dump and you can recycle it you are able to recycle these boards eventually. You would have to strip the, um, the resin off it, um, you'd have to get to the foam, and then you could recycle it. So there's a couple of companies um, in the US that are now making recycled foam blanks. So they're collecting foam, they're basically chopping the, the foam up, and they're making blanks out of it, so it can be recycled. So better for the planet. The other thing to say is that <coughs> Uh, one of the reasons why I like working with epoxy is for me personally, when I'm laminating with epoxy, um, it, is, it is better for my health. It releases less fumes. So in some of my videos, you would have seen me doing a gloss coat and I'm not wearing a mask. Now, had that been traditional polyester, I would have had to have a mask because of all the fumes that are coming off there. So this, this stuff's better for me. It's better if I get it on my skin. Uh, it's better when I sand it. When you sand fiberglass, you're always going to get fiber, so that's not good. But the actual epoxy uh, is fine when it comes to sanding as well. It doesn't get into your lungs as much. Um, the other thing is that, in theory, epoxy is recyclable. So you could heat up a epoxy board. I could take one of these boards, I could put a torch onto it. And what will happen is it will eventually run. The epoxy will eventually run back into a liquid. Okay? Um, and it's probably not worth doing it, but it could be recycled. So it could be recycled. And then the other thing is that this is made up of biomass. So um, there's a certain percentage in this epoxy which is made from natural biomass materials. Um, they're, they're roughly between 30 and 40% biomass. Um, this one says 29%. Um, and that just means that instead of taking petrochemicals, they're taking natural elements found in nature. So you know, from plant extracts and oils, etc., and they're putting that into the resin. So it just makes it a lot greener. Um, like I said earlier in my other questions, there's definitely a place for PU, and I don't hate PU. I think it's a great material. It's not the most environmentally friendly, but it has a place in surfing. Um, I use the, the PU foam, but then I glass with epoxy, so I try and mix those two worlds together. But there's definitely a place for that as well. Um, the key thing I'd probably say is try EPS, you know, give it a go. Um, the guys that are working with it um, have been reluctant to move from PU to EPS. Once they do, and once they get familiar with how everything works and, you know, the curing times and all of those things, they're really making some, some real good products. And you'll see it with our, with our stand-up cousins, you know, Slater Designs, Firewire, you know, you struggle to actually find PU foam in their lineup. It is traditionally all EPS, and then they have these new materials like LFT and wood and all these other things that they're adding to it as well. But what I would say is definitely give uh, EPS a try. My rule of thumb is use it for the smaller waves, and it works very well in that. It'll give you an advantage, give you an edge, and it'll basically keep you surfing when you know, it's small and there's just long borders out. 
you'll still be surfing if you get onto an EPS. So yeah, bonus question, a little bit about um, expanded polystyrene. Cheers.